Are you willing to take any questions from anyone else other than me? No. Anyone have any questions? Sit down. You don't want no questions? I'm not here to answer questions. I'm here to represent okay. my client. Right. Ms. Bartlett, do you want to answer any questions from anybody? Um, I would like to say something. I would like to speak. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Oh. Um, I just want to say um, I appreciate you guys listening to this and I didn't know about can you say again the law that you're saying it's federal so we can it's the religious land use and institutionalized persons act okay it was passed in 2000 okay well um yeah I don't think the League of Municipalities knows anything about that law either yes, but they do. Um, well not who I talked to today but listen, what I, what I want to say is about the whole historical letter that just got given, it is, it is very strange. The Historical Commission, as far as I know, they meet twice a year. I have been working to get this home, getting the research together with the Ro just at Rogers family since the, in the fall. And I have worked very, very hard. This, is, I, this was a, a big deal. I got back from a cruise and found out, that when I got back from a cruise, that my house was approved. I can't help it. I think it's very weird timing too. And frankly, in the situation I'm in, I'm looking at everything good as a God wink myself. But anyway, I can. They met on Thursday on the 29th, and they approved my home unanimously. Now, what I think is awesome, and what I appreciate, is the executive director, who's already been here once at the first city council meeting, wrote the letter. He didn't even know anything about what we called him to tell him it was approved. He didn't know anything about it. So this, the Historical Commission, he does the Historical Alabama Preservation of Trust, whatever. And he's the executive director of that. So he travels around to lots of city council meetings representing historical homes and historical sites. And I appreciate that. But I, I just want you to know what was very surreal to me is yesterday I called that lady that signed the papers, Miss Wolford, and I said, now this is unreal. Y'all have only seen the good stuff of the house. What I need you to know is I'm going to a city council meeting tomorrow night, and she told me that Governor Bentley's sending me a certificate this week and that they were doing an official letter. And I said, I know I can't hurry up the governor, but is there any way that I can get that letter so that I can take it to the city council? And she said, well, I'll tell you what, I can scan it. That's not even the letter that y'all are going to receive, and I'll email it to you. Well, what was crazy is when I got it, I noticed on there it says it's copying the mayor and it's copying the city council. That is not a letter to say in your face. In most cities, they're very, very proud when a home is chosen to be a historical landmark in the state of Alabama. And the reason why they're copying the mayor and the city council and all that genealogical study and the historical societies is to is to let you know what's happening in your town. And, I just I want you to know that I, I just I feel like you need to um, know that but I'm very proud of my house and I'm, I'm proud for the Rogers family the West family the Emmons family and now the Bartlett family who has fought to protect this house and that's all I'm doing it's I am thankful for this for the Rogers family and forever and you know it'll be a part of history and a landmark in the state of Alabama and I'm thankful for that and I plan to get a, one of those black things and put it outside I plan to do all that but in the meantime, I live in this house, and even if I don't live in it in the future, I'm just basically, I'm a homeowner, regardless of if it's historical or not, and I'm asking that the city help protect my property. Not just my property, but the properties that are back behind me. And I do, and I ask, of course, for the Booth property too. So that's, that's the whole deal here. I wanted to explain that to you. I'm very proud of that, and I'm proud for the city of Morris, whether or not they're proud. I'm proud and I'm, I'm thankful for everything that the Rogers family has ever done to contribute to this city and I would just ask that once again it, when it goes back to who purchased the property it, it wasn't Snow that sold it to the church it should have been John F. Rogers based on my research yeah That's who it was. John F. Rogers right which I've talked to him they've helped me a lot with the historical stuff and they sold it to the church and it to be honest with you if I was in the home I wouldn't have been able to pay $75,000 we have already been through that we know what the appraised value was and I couldn't have done that but what I would say is when I moved in I, I would make no bones about it I knew Enon Baptist Church owned that strip of woods the booths also knew we knew who our neighbors were 
but we also knew it was a residential lot with Irene Street running right, right through the front of it and with an unvacated alley owned behind it, owned by the city of Morris. And the lot was zoned residential. And I don't know what to, what to tell you how much research you can do about, hey, asking your neighbor, what are you ever planning to do with your land? I mean, nobody ever asked me what I'm planning to do with my land. I just know my land is zoned residential. I bought a house next to a residential lot, and I really would like to um, keep the integrity of my home and the property. And I thank you for hopefully considering and not basing everything on that religious whatever it was. Thank you, Ms. Barth. This time I'm going to allow about five minutes for people to have questions that they want to ask. Can I speak to I think Mr. Booth wanted to speak. Oh, you Mr. Booth? Yeah, I'm, I'll I'm speak to ask sorry, man. I, I, I had to work. That's as far as I just can't. Uh, I'm Chris. Copy your amount with your name on it. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm Chris, <laughs> next door uh, to the property. Uh, just as far as I've never heard about the religious rule, so I looked it up on Wiki. Mm -hmm. Real simple answer. <laughs> General government shall not impose or implement the land use regulation in a manner that imposes a substantial burden on the religious exercise of that person. So, based off the way that reads, I'm asking you to, you know, but it's not gonna put a substantial burden on the church to walk across the street, obviously, and go from the four acre lot. Now, I'm, I, I know that the, the rule, the law is much more substantial than that. I'm, I'm, I'm not yeah, debating that part of it. It's pretty, goes but, way in there. It and I understand, but there, the federal government doesn't give churches blankets, bro. I mean, that's just the way it is. I'm just saying they're not giving them a blanket to do whatever they want with their property. It's it's it it is written that way. There may be something in there that we're reading, but guaranteed that's not the way it's written. Well, the government doesn't read, give this. The, our city attorney is the one read, and they sent us brief description of what the law is. And, and like I say, I'm just worried that that they're giving us. That I understand they're looking out for Morris, but I'm also looking out for me. And there's got to be, it, it's not just a blanket. They're not going to give, okay, the church owns 75 acres over here. <coughs> Have at it. Build yourself a, you know, whatever. It doesn't, you know, the government doesn't do that. They, they don't want to inconvenience. But the way the rules, the way it's written in there, and there's a few applications written there, and it's talking about how you can't stop prisoners from going to church. You can't, it, it's got a lot of stuff like that in it. And, I'm not stopping anybody from going to church on a 90-acre spot. I mean, a 92-foot spot. I mean, it's really not stopping anybody. What I'm asking you guys to consider is it is a residential area. I have trees there now. I have some borders. I know I know who bought it, and I exactly like what you said. I knew exactly who owned it. Uh, I mean, I didn't know there was any pipes over there that could bust and send water into my yard. Nobody did. We thought it was a spring. You know, it's, 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 there's a lot of things you don't know about property when you buy. And yeah, I mean, if I've talked, I've talked to the people that own the church before that. And I talked to my, you know, you, you have to trust your realtor. And you know, my realtor said, well, it's a church. What are they gonna do with 90, 92 feet? Yeah, you know, so sure. you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, 92 feet, not a whole lot I can do with it. Never trust your realtor. But what I'm looking at now is when I'm, looking at everything is now, I'm going to have no shade on that whole side of my property. So I'm going to, true or not, I mean, I mean, it's it's going to be a lot of trees I'm losing. Morning. There's no shade. No, that won't be any shade. You lose every tree over there. I got no shade. You have no shade once the sun starts to the west. Uh, I know that's, that's where my garden is. I'm kind of happy about that side of it. But <laughs> on the other side, I'd like to have a little bit of shade on my house. You know, my power bill is a concern for my house was built in. 1908 or whatever and it has no insulation so. can i ask you a question on on your front door you have a plaque from jefferson county it is a historical home from jefferson county it is recognized in jefferson, recognized as jefferson, jefferson county. county not alabama i didn't go there i haven't tried to uh the pendergast who owned it before me have all that stuff and i tried to get a hold of them it's kind of hard to find to do or it's kind of hard to get all that information he had all the historical things when we bought the house and i meant to get copies of it uh -huh. I never did get him. Uh, he lives up in Coleman now, and I'm gonna try to get a hold of all that stuff because he did research it, who owned it, and all that kind of good stuff. And we, you know, we read up on it. But you know, to us, it's a home. I really have the I mean, significance of it being old is that it's built with nothing more to me. Uh, the biggest 
thing that I have is I want to have a homestead. So I want to have my own garden. I want to have my own animals. Uh, the shade is very good, okay, very God, healthy I for my animals. Zone for that, but. I am perfectly well zoned within my rights to have a chicken <coughs> in my yard. A chicken? I have chickens in my yard. You're welcome to come up there and see them, and I'm perfectly within my rights. He has a roaster that wakes me up every morning at 6 o'clock. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that I have some animals, and I'm going to continue to have my animals. I'm built out here for a reason. I came out here so that I could have a space. And there's no zoning in Jefferson County. We did do research. There's no reason I can't have chickens in Jefferson County. I've already done that. Now, I came down here and asked for the rules about residential and rural, and they said I'm perfectly within my rights to have some chickens. My neighbors don't complain. As long as your neighbors ain't complaining, we don't give a real. And my neighbors <laughs> next door, Luke, is fine with it. He's never said anything to me, and she hadn't complained yet, so we're good there. But what I'm saying is it's gonna, can change, it's gonna change the dynamic of my property. I'm gonna lose all my trees, I'm gonna lose a lot of shade. I'm gonna lose a lot of aspects of what I bought. And I understand, I did know that they bought it. I didn't know who owned it. And yes, if I would have had the opportunity to buy it, I would try to figure out a way to do so. I didn't have that opportunity. You know, it's a 92-foot spot. I did not think anybody was going to try to put a parking lot next to me. And and shine, you know, like, like I said, there are going to be instances when somebody coming and going is going to put their lights in my house. And, you know, and I do deal with people dealing, you know, wheeling around out there in the front. And yes, I dealt with for about a little over a year, the lights staying on to about 3.30 in the morning shining my daughter's window. I mean, that I didn't complain about. I knew good and well going in that I had a church in front of me. And I didn't say a word. All I want you to know is that if, you know, everybody said, you know, at the last minute it was said, you know, it's your property, you know, it's their property, let them do with what they will. Okay, does that apply for me as well? It's my property. Can I have an acre and a half chicken house? I'm just, I'm just saying, that rule, it's logical. Okay, you tell me it's their property, let them do with what they will. It's my property, let me do with what I will. So I have, the logic is same. You come in and, and, and put in a rezoning. And, and that's what I'm asking you, you to do is consider, place. consider what you're asking them, what you're doing to well, you, me. You consider what you just asked of us. You come and apply for rezoning your property from residential to agriculture. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to, yeah, well, but that's got nothing to do with this. I'm just saying, it's sound logic. So it's sound logic. It's sound logic. You're letting right. them do with whatever they want to with their property. That's within reason. Well, within reason would be for me to have whatever I want back there because then, let them do with what they reason. want. Is the the whole statement was this was America. Let them do what they want. It's their property. That was what was said at the last meeting, word for word. And I'm just I repeating. Last minute, so I'm I just cannot. repeating. So I'm just trying to explain that if that logic is sound, everybody's going to do weird crap with their property all over the, all over the place. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. And yes, I understand. You guys believe, or some of you believe, that a uh, parking lot is within reason. To me, it's without. I don't want a parking lot next to my house. I mean, so that reflects my judgment versus your judgment. Okay, next door neighbor, your next door neighbor decides that they're gonna have a home church. And, and in the state of Alabama, that's pretty pretty common actually, and they decide they're gonna pave their entire back lot. They're perfectly within their rights to have a concrete parking lot in their backyard. But would you approve of it? Would you like it? No. It's there, I wouldn't care. As long as I ain't got a weed eat next to it. <laughs> but but it. The thing is, I appreciate you coming forward on your own without bringing someone else. Really? And uh, and it's not a jab to you. It yes, certainly is. It certainly is. It's not I a jab to bring. No, I appreciate I you saying that. This is good. I, Let him talk. I, I, I believe that Miss Bartlett had came forward first, and this is my honest opinion. I really don't care who votes for me this time. I was elected to do and serve a purpose service. If this is posted on YouTube or anything, you will get sued. Okay, sue me. <gasps> sue me. Because it will be on YouTube. I'll tell you my name. My name is Michael Bartlett. Let's get back to what we're here for. Uh, so me too. Uh, but I believe, Ms. Bartlett, had you came to us 
and spoke to us first. And, and, and this is my honest opinion. The consideration would have been different. I don't believe it would have been as much. You're speaking to me. Can I speak back to that when well, you get done? Let me finish what I'm saying. I will. It wouldn't have been as big as it has turned out to be. I honestly don't believe that. We've had issues in this town before with the zoning problems. It turned out to be a massive thing that shouldn't have been because someone went outside. It'll be much bigger after tonight. Okay, well go ahead now. Now I would like to respond to that. I, I think it was very clear that it has been said, which I, I guess you weren't in any of the zoning meetings, no, but I came to the city hall and I did not originally hire an attorney. I hired an attorney when I found out that the previous deacon at Enon, Henry Michael, had passed away, and now there's a, there was another deacon, uh, David Riddlesberger, who, I, the only reason I found that out that he was a deacon is because I sat down and read the paper just like everybody else, yes, that a deacon passed away, and Pat McCool was saying, we're going to miss a member, a member of our church, a deacon of our church, and the chairman of the zoning board. Well, you picture yourself living in my house. I'm getting ready to go up before the zoning board thinking just naive, like I'm going to tell them everything. Now, before you answer, listen to me. Sure. So I, I panicked. I mean, there's no question. So there is, there wasn't even an issue with, yes, Misty is going to get on the phone and get a hold of a property attorney. I don't have the money just to throw away. No way. I'm a single mom, but I knew I have Houston. We've got a problem. That's when the attorney stepped into the picture. And if he had not... I remember very well, and it's all reported that previous city council meeting when Craig said those things to me. If I had not had my attorney, I know uh, what would have happened. One zoning board meeting had already gone through, and members of the church refused to recuse themselves. So how can you sit there and tell me, like, if I would have talked? I tried to talk. I was told to direct, direct all of my concerns to a member of Enon Baptist Church. How does that work out? From the zoning board? From the mayor. So I was told to direct everything. I have letters. I have every. Trust me. My laptop is full and even the safety deposit box at the bank. I have got a lot. And I worked very hard to try to talk to the city and had no idea what was happening. And I understand if you didn't know, realize all that, I, I but be no really careful because, right, and well, I'm just telling you, I you don't have to worry about that because I, Misty, matter of fact, I, I've never hired a property, property attorney. I really thought moving into this house that actually Morris would be very proud that I would take care of this home, and I had no idea all this was going to happen. I, I, I promise you. I would have rather lived in Gardendale and said, go Enon Baptist Church, thumbs up. Go Morris City. God bless you, everything, if I was outside of this situation. But I'm literally right here in the middle, and I'm going to do everything I can to protect myself. And I'm, I'm not done. And I'm, I'm committed to protect myself and my home because I know that this is only a step. So it's, it, you, you can say it, had, it got big. I appreciate it getting big. I appreciate every reporter that came and that videoed and that took pictures and that has been here shining a spotlight because when Misty tried to ask for help, we saw what happened. But when Misty got an attorney and the media got involved, we saw a little bit of change. Now tonight is a very big surprise, so I know the reporters are glad they're here, but I'm very thankful that it got big because it was Misty's only prayer for anything fair. And I'm sorry if he's made y'all mad, but let me tell you, I have been, I'm, I'm scared. Of the things I have seen progress in every one of these meetings, anybody would be very scared. And, and there's a lot of people paying attention to exactly what's going on. And I, 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 it would be only natural. If you would, didn't hire an attorney and, you, and this was going on and you were all in the spotlight, people would probably say, I wonder why. They, you know, it must just be a situation of they can't afford it. Let me tell you something. I'll refinance my house. I, I am convinced that if you live in the Snow Rogers house, you have got to budget in your monthly expenses an attorney. And I have planned to do so pretty much for the rest of the time I own that house. So, There's sorry. something I'll make an apology on for myself, not aware of the situation at hand that's going on. But, and take this again, it's not personal dabs with the attorney. If I had known the issue, he would have never had to deal with this. Because I would have been making sure that everything T's and I's was crossed. Now, 
What took place in the zoning meetings, I do not know. I do know that the fact that they were members that didn't uh, abstain from voting, which they should have abstained from the vote. You're correct. Uh, and the minutes are public record, not just the minutes that were printed, the minutes that were recorded. Right. So that's pu that's pu that'll yes, be public information, and you can you can find all this stuff out. As I, when I served on the zoning board, those issues had come from. I didn't have to abstain, but because it involved my family, I abstained from the vote. And that, that's that's basically. Do you have any info? Yeah, don't wreck my property, man. I thank you, Mr. Booth, for coming in. Anyone else?